and Persona 5 at the same time. So it's kind of <laughs> it's kind of hard to get back into mobile gaming. I'll help someone out. Why not? Or have someone help me, but you know, it's whatever. As you guys can see, games load pretty fast. And games always obviously run faster with the 835, but... I'm going to come out with a video after this, I think, detailing how I feel about... <sighs> If I truly feel the Galaxy S8 is enough for me to want to upgrade to, or not upgrade necessarily, but get. Because as good as it would be for the channel, it's just more that for me personally, I've heard a lot of things that a lot of great things and a lot of those great things from a lot of like tech reviewers and a lot of tech channels have seen more like just praise for praise sake and not like and not taking the criticisms into like major consideration because a lot of the times when Samsung phones come out people just say, oh the screen the screen Oh, the design, the design, and that's all they say. And it's like, that's not something that I really value in a phone. It's just the screen and the design. While I, while I um appreciate, you know, a decently designed phone and a great, lo a good looking screen and stuff like that, I do value those things quite a bit. It's just. I've heard I've just heard a lot of things that just make me seem like, well, if they still have those certain things that they haven't worked out yet, I don't necessarily see a point in getting that phone right now. I just don't think it's eight hundred fifty dollars worth for the S8 plus to get a phone that only gets four to five and a half hours of screen on time with a thirty five hundred milliamp hour battery. That's. That's just my personal opinion. When I can get that already with the G6, and I'm completely fine with that. And I could get that with this as well, with the 3,000 milliamp hour battery. Same with my V20. I'm completely fine with it, but I'm not about to get into all that right now. This is the S8 review. S8, S7 review. <laughs> uh, so... How is performance as far as Wi-Fi and stuff goes? How is that side of it? As you guys can see, when it came to, you know, just playing the game, there were like a few minor stutters and stuff like that, but nothing too terrible. Nothing like I could be like, oh, God, this is terrible. I don't want the S7 is trash. It's not. But. The thing is, is that when people get a sexy phone in their hand, all they think about is how it feels and not about how the performance of the software and how optimized the experience is. And that's my, it's pretty much my, what am I trying to say? That's pretty much my, how I feel when it comes to when people do reviews on phones, they don't think about... <laughs> What truly matters, I guess. And it's not just the look. I per personally, I don't like glass on glass backs on phones. I really don't. But I won't deny that this phone is beautiful. It is. Same with the G6. I don't like glass backs. But the, the phone is beautiful as well. But what goes into that beauty has with the hardware has to go into the software as well. I'm not just talking about how good the software looks. I'm talking about how good the software runs as well. If the software runs great, then good. Good. That's what I want. I want the software to run great. I don't want it to run like trash. And that's what a lot of iPhone users are suffering now is that ever since they got to iOS uh, 7, yeah, iOS 7, I think, performance has not been so great and it's like 
and they've been switching to Android. And it's like, look, I get that because they've had optimized experiences for the longest time. And now it's just like they no longer have that. So why not just switch teams and see what the other team has to offer? And I understand that. And well, my Samsung users, what you not my Samsung users, I don't mean to say it like that, but with the Samsung users and my audience, what you guys need to realize is that I don't hate this phone. I don't hate Samsung phones at all. I wouldn't have gotten this phone if I hated it. Now, originally, I wanted the S7 Edge, but, but I forgot that the. I forgot to look at what if it was the S7 Edge, but I just got this and it's cool. I'm fine with it. It was between this and the Moto Z Play. It was between both of those. I personally wanted to do the Moto Z Play, but I was like, I kind of want to try the S7, give it a chance. So I just got the S7 and I don't regret it now. I regretted it back then because, you know, it was performance wasn't up to snuff now that it's up to snuff it's a great phone and now with the galaxy s8 out my final verdict on this phone is essentially if you guys want a phone like the s8 because this is essentially just a smaller s8 (laughs) with and if you valued the front-mounted fingerprint scanner, if you valued the recent and back capacitive buttons, buttons so you can get this full-screen real estate, I personally don't like this because I tend to hit, I tend to hit the capacitive buttons by mistake sometimes. That's why I really don't like it. But more power to you if you like that. I'm not about to say that it's a bad thing for you to like that. It's totally up to you. But. As far as this goes, the Galaxy S7 now is probably the phone I'm going to keep now that I don't have my Note 5 until the next Note phone comes out. And I'm going to praise that up and down. I know that much. But, but Which is a thing. I never liked the Galaxy S series ever. I never did. I've always loved the Note series. And... For me to get this phone and love it now as compared to how I felt before, that should got that should tell you guys how much I am not a Samsung hater. I'm not. Despite the fact that I have more LG phones than I do Samsung phones, that's just strictly because I was familiar with LG. I never back then in the twenty thirteen and fourteen, Samsung had the shittiest software. I don't care what you say they did. And and hardware, too. But again, I don't care about that. <sighs> they had the shittiest software. And while there's still remnants of that with this phone and even with the Galaxy S8 for some people. It's toned down and it's more worth it to go Samsung now for me. I never cared about the AMOLED displays and stuff like that. And with, L- <sighs> with LG doing going back to OLED next year which is something I'm going to talk about a bit later there's going to be stiff competition and Samsung needs to figure out a way to differentiate their phones other than that we're the we're the Apple that is the most customizable I guess you can say they're so far, they're Apple to the extreme, I guess you can say, where they, where Samsung innovates on any corner that they can, or Apple innovates on corners where they don't necessarily need to, other than like the very first iPhone, up to like the iPhone 4S and 5. 5S, I'd argue, because that's when they brought their fingerprint scanner, and it was better than any other fingerprint scanner on the market. (laughs) But as far as this phone goes, I love it now. Despite all the cracks that has come from my girlfriend and the original user, (laughs) I still love to use this phone naked, and I never dropped it. I have never dropped this phone. But 
it's worth the five hundred and sixty nine dollars that it's worth now. And if you don't want to spite the bullet on eight hundred and fifty, damn near nine hundred dollars for the Galaxy S eight plus in particular, or seven hundred fifty for the S eight, then go with the S seven. Find it on eBay for cheaper. That's what I did. I got this for two hundred fifty, and I love it. But yeah, that's pretty much it. I just wanted to make this video. This is Sparta. Thank you guys for watching. Thanks for the support. And I hope you guys have a wonderful Thursday.